from the Southwestern Oklahoma State University's new online continuing education course, Health, Safety, and Certified Fall Prevention Teacher Training. This is a course that we're just putting up. It combines <clears throat> the basics of the personal safety training courses that we've been offering <clears throat> since 2002, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, <clears throat> along with the fall prevention education healthcare course, which offers a teacher certificate from Southwestern. <clears throat> and the contents of a workshop that we did in 2015 addressing the needs of counselors, therapists, and social workers who in these chaotic times are being attacked and injured and leaving this critical profession. So, since we have techniques that deflect and enable a person to safely escape this kind of a issue. We created a workshop to do that. In 2010, I made a presentation at the National Social Workers Yearly Conference and explained that we had found a way to deal with this issue. Unfortunately, When we got around to doing the workshop, which was two days long, nine to four, we weren't able to get social workers freed from their jobs coming across the state to participate. We had nine counselors and each one bringing a training partner, and that was all a wonderful accomplishment. But clearly, we need to get this kind of training online where it could reach everybody where they are. We have training, uh, practice training on the phone so I can still coach and uh, this will be a way that we can solve that problem. Now the other problem that we need to deal with is everyone needs a training partner in order to learn it and in order to have the kind of safety that everyone needs in this world, which is somebody nearby who is trained with them, who can deal with dangers that appear. Okay? It could be in the office, it could be on the way home, it could be anywhere. So in order to make this a feasible thing economically, if you add up the tuition, for all the courses that we've covered. At this time, it would come out $1,008. <clears> and <throat> we're also dealing with student debt. So if you combine those two, what we've done is we've come up with a <laughs> incredibly manageable price for this whole 10, -ish, 10 uh, meetings. And it is, $40. For $40, everyone interested can recruit and enroll with a training partner and have that person there uh, every time that they have a minute to do the training and every minute that they're out moving around or in an office and have a safety issue because the training partner is a critical part of not only preventing the problem, because when people see that there's other people around, a lot of times they won't try to go to violence. But on the way out with our Safe Escape program, this training partner is the one who can guard the individual as they leave and not have an attack from the rear, which is the most dangerous one that Curves, okay. So that's a breakthrough. We put it online. We've got the price manageable for everybody. Okay. We have another uh, breakthrough. 
In fact, we have several, and I'll go over those with you. In the training, one thing that we're emphasizing now is that as you train with your partner, you have one person who's the aggressor and one's the defender. Okay? Now, we also make sure that you reverse roles. So everybody gets to see what an aggressor looks like at the moment when they're beginning to turn into that aggressor. Uh, there's expressions, there's movements, and so forth. This is a critical body of knowledge. We don't want to wait before we do what we can until a person is already set up and becoming aggressive. If we can see this in its beginning stage, we can leave. And this is especially important when you're out walking around and one of the partners sees someone beginning to move into that posture and so forth, they could give a signal and they just take off. So the trap can be identified from a distance as it barely begins to form and you don't wait until somebody shows up aggressive stance or behavior, okay? We had another major breakthrough, and that was when a member of the Presidential Protection Team Training Corps, a Marine Presidential Team Trainer, joined our class with his wife, okay? Now, what he shared with us was how people, two or three people, can break through a crowd that has surrounded them and escape, which is what the presidential protection team had to do. And they needed to do it without harming the people who were surrounding them. And that is very valuable in our case, especially in an age when you look out you look out the door and there may be a crowd protesting something and you have to get to the car. You have to get across the parking lot. This is a very valuable set of skills. The other thing was that this gentleman was also a veteran of Afghanistan. Okay, So he had been trained in terms of how do you walk around in the midst of people who may at any moment reach out you. So, as is the case of so many returning soldiers, he was covered with what we call lethal reflexes. Now, this had caused him to be really unable to walk around with his family in an ordinary circumstance because someone bumping into him could have triggered one of these. And that could have cost him the very freedom that he was fighting for. But when we put the non-lethal reflexes over that, he was then able to go around with his family. If something bumped him, he goes out to save distance with our technique, and he's no longer trapped by reflexes that no longer fit a civilian circumstance, okay? Another thing that we have we're stressing now is we're going to reach the professionals that are really the first line de of defense for our civil society and by reaching them on online and in the phone we're going to be be able to get instantaneous feedback with anything that happens that our training does not cover at that moment. And these things change and we need to keep up with everything and protect them. This would also add in nurses, it would add in teachers, it would add in coaches, it would add in people who are taking large groups out across into, into territory well beyond Southwestern safe campus. So, okay. 
there's two other groups that if we can get these <laughs> Me Too defender groups formed, they could truly benefit by this. One thing that is really tragic right now is the online bullying of young girls and young men. The effect of the online bullying of the young women is a radical increase in the suicide rate. In the case of the young men, they tend to go in the direction of finding a firearm and shooting in the schools. One thing that I heard from one of these individuals that really made me think about it was I always try to miss the people who were nice to me. If we could start forming Me Too defense groups and when you find an isolated person walking along on the phone, perhaps you could get them to join you, you'll go with them, they go with you, and we stop this critical and extremely dangerous isolation, okay? Now, when you heard the title of this, it sounds like two courses, but really, all of the things that we're doing go back to Yang style Tai Chi. And it's important for those of you who have not been connected with us before to understand why that works. And it is an amazing breakthrough because up to that point, people, when their village was invaded, they would fight and try to protect themselves and often be overwhelmed by incoming bandits with spears and swords and horses and armor. Now how do you how do you deal with that? Well Yang Lu Chan, the developer of Chan Yang style Tai Chi, had first become a master of Chen style which was one of the most violent and powerful forms of Tai Chi. But in the process of doing that, he realized we will never get enough people at that point <clears throat> to truly defend a village. We're going to have to take another approach. Okay? We're going to have to learn how to stop it another way. <clears throat> and that's what he did. If you've taken these courses before, you run into two of his critical principles. One, never meet force with force. Two, never go into pain. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> that sounds great, but how do you use that to defend the village against incoming swords and spears and armor and horses. Well, when you never meet force with force, what it is that you're doing is, and here I can have Chris help me with this, uh, Chris Reif, adjunct clinical instructor of this course since 2008, a graduate of the Southwestern Collegiate police officer training, and a firearms expert. He works at 10 Star, he knows about all of that. So, here's how that works. Never meet force with force, okay? Now, if I see there's all these forces coming in, and I'm not going to meet them, how am I going to deal with that? Well, I'm either going to have to get around it, okay? Or I'm going to have to deflect it and get around it, okay? But I don't meet it head on. He knew that the villagers, almost all of them, they're, they're farmers. They're, they're people who work every day. They're not weak, but they haven't practiced the striking 
that warriors strive. So I have two ways. I can either go around and not meet that force, or I can deflect it and not meet that force. If I do that, what happens? I end up here. Now, if you'll turn just a little bit, this is called the flank in military terms. When I am here, he is not able to attack me. In fact, he's extremely vulnerable, huh? Because I have this whole area of his neck and his head and so forth that I can strike with devastating results, and he can't really protect himself. I take one more step, and I'm behind him, okay? Never meet force with force, okay? So here he's vulnerable. Back here, I won't meet any force because if he goes back off his heels, he has no force. So I've eliminated his force. I've eliminated his defense, okay? Never go into pain. Now that's a very interesting one. When people go into pain, and they would do that if they're fighting force against force, they're either approaching a situation in which they are being injured by the process, at which point they're going to break down and become totally vulnerable, or they're reaching a limit to how much they can do before they're exhausted, and then they're vulnerable again. So you don't go into pain. Now, if you are moving around like we just did, you won't be going into pain. Okay? And so you keep deflecting and so forth. Now they're using full force. Okay? Now the thing to remember that you're fighting to protect the village. Okay? Or you're fighting to protect your friends. This is not a sport. Okay? There is no referee. There is no cage. This goes on until somebody wins and somebody loses. Okay, So you have to continue until the other side stops. And very few people are prepared and trained to do that. So even if you're going to do this fighting back business, uh, there's a tremendous risk that the trained fighter, the bully, the people who attacks every day and fight each other is going to outlast you. So we don't go into pain and uh, using these techniques, we can sustain what we're doing long enough to get into a position to neutralize that attack, okay? Now this training spread across China and there were many many villages who learned this and what happened was when they were attacked and they kept doing this and the attackers weren't getting anywhere except tired they were they were finally wearing themselves out because they weren't ever able to stop okay. they made a strategic decision they just went somewhere else and that's really what we want to do in dealing with bullies, in dealing with predators. We want them to go somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Uh, Yang Lu Chan made a mistake once in his life. Because when he was challenged, he would do this sort of thing. And then once he would get a person like this, he'd say, well, you did a really good job. Uh, <laughs> I, I really respect your techniques. Let's go have dinner. <laughs> he would always try to make friends with them. Huh? One time, he made the mistake in the process of injuring someone seriously. And that plagued him for the rest of his life because that person and their family kept trying to catch him and attack him. And that's what we run into today if you escape, okay, uh, you're good. If in the process you have injured somebody and humiliated them, you can probably be sure that they're going to come back after you. And we don't want that to happen, okay? 
So, I started to show you the techniques that are involved in not going into pain and never meeting force with force. Let's take a look at how those were covered in the workshop that we did that was inspired by the surprise attack on Christy LaGrange, graduate of Southwestern, counselor of the year, who was attacked by surprise from the rear by a client. Okay. Now, when we went through this the last time, what we did, she had gone through the door and walked in. Uh, she was told by this person that the mother would be there. And he, she could talk to the mother and help perhaps change the client's behavior. Anyway, she walks in, walks past the door. He's behind it. And he comes, he comes at her with a brick and stuns her knocks her down, they struggle for several minutes. Finally, she dies, he puts her in the trunk. The neighbors hear this, call the police, he's captured and so forth. But what on earth can you do when you're here and you just see that motion, okay? Well, that's a very powerful motion, isn't it? And I'm in a very weak position now. In Yang style Tai Chi, they ran into this situation when, in the process of defending the village, the people that were attacking them were on horses. Now that's an overwhelming, powerful force. Okay, and what they learned was you can't change the direction of a horse. But what you can do is you can trigger a defensive reflex. Okay? In the case of the horse, they triggered it with what they ended up calling a whip, single whip. And they would crack a whip. If the, if the rider is over here with a sword, I crack a whip here and the horse just turns himself. Huh? If I crack it again, He'll be running right back through his own troops, which is a perfect solution. So the first thing we came up with is this is coming and there is the reflex, okay? In this part of the arm, there is a nerve that if you tap it, it will stop the arm moving. Our body is covered with points like this, which are used to protect it. And this is one of them, so that when this, we stop. Huh? Now, so that momentarily freezes it. Now, in the previous version of this, what we did was went to the next way that horses were dealt with. We went to here and went like that. Now, that's okay if you can do that fast enough, okay? And if you're strong enough and stable. And you can get there with this training. But you may have noticed that I'm limping a little bit. I have an injury. And that put me back into a position where I'm a lot closer to my students in the beginning than I have been in the past. So I wanted to find something that they could do if they weren't able to do this so fast, which comes with practice. Now, what, what's, what could you do in the meantime? If you go into the Tai Chi, moving for better balance selection of Yang style techniques, there is another one. They disguise these with wonderful terminology. Fair lady works the shuttle. Well, we're not going to weave something, okay? but that action if I, if I come in like this, I can stop it. Now you notice that 
I'm I'm still solid on my feet. I'm leaning into it, okay, and I'm lifting this person up so he's no longer leaning forward. So I've stopped his forward motion. Okay. Then I can come to here more successfully, more easily, more effectively, and keep going. Okay. So we added that in, and that's a major breakthrough. So we have this one and this one. Now, at this point, you can also look and see if you have an open way to escape. If you happen to, if you happen to be in a situation where you did this because here it comes and you look and there's a wall there or there's furniture and you can't go that way, what do you do? The fair lady works the shuttle, goes both ways. Now I can go over on this way and escape like that. So this is a major development. We use the person's strength, we set the attacker up where he's lost his forward momentum, and we can check both sides and decide which way we need to go. Okay. Now, in the case of a truly deadly attack, and we, want, we don't really need to practice this all the way through, but when I get to here and I get to here, if I come to here, I have total control of him. Now, I don't need to drop him on his head in order to see that this works. Uh, but if I get to this point, this reminds me of what Yang Lu Chen used to do. He would get to someone to that and say, well, you've done a really great job. <laughs> and the person says, well, thank you very much. And he says, well, let's have dinner. <laughs> because at that point, his, <laughs> he has complete control, and the other person is happy to not go farther. So this is something we can practice, get to this point, and make a decision. Uh, if this is a deadly attack, and we are not bound by the do-no-harm, guidelines which controls people in healthcare, and we have to get out of there. That is one of the options. You can, of course, lay the person down or not. Okay. We now have another whole dimension of how to deal with that. Okay. Now, so that's a breakthrough and an upgrade. We've added this in. Okay. We've added in escaping, we've added in this, which a person can learn more quickly, okay? Um, now, it's important to understand the second five lessons are focused on fall, certified fall prevention teacher training, okay? Now, where have you learned what you're going to be teaching? You learn it right in the first five. The reason that the second five will cover teacher certificate training is because in the first five, we're going to cover all of the eight forms that make up Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance Fall Prevention Training. Now, we just looked at single whip. We looked at fair lady works the shuttle. Huh? We looked at parting the wild horse's mane is what that's called. Now we are, <laughs> what we're doing is we're using this leverage. Now to a degree, if you put pressure here, that's a vulnerable area and people will go away from it. Not as <laughs> dramatically as a horse if you run up like that, or us if you run up like that. But we have that, okay? Now, I mentioned the training that we went through with the Presidential Protection Team leader. 
And one of the things that he emphasized was how do you get a person safely through a crowd and what we need to do is some of the other parts of the eight forms that will make up the fall prevention are things that we can do in getting through the crowd. The person escaping can do it and the person behind them guarding them can do it. One of these plays a major role in the fall prevention training and it's called hold the ball. And that's because the it the motions kind of look like holding a ball. Okay. Uh, because my emphasis is on safety and protection, I call it hold the wall. And when we come around to this position, okay, this hand is shaped this way in case there's a wall. And this hand is here to protect the hip. And when in my classes, I have people practice this. They go to that position. I have had people go into a wall and hurt their fingers, go into the wall and go into a door and they lose their balance somewhat and bruise themselves. But if you can figure this way, you have a way to fend off people who are perhaps the crowd you have to go through. Now another one that we cover in the escape process is called waving hands like clouds. Okay. And in the form, we're doing this, okay? And if you just do it back and forth sideways, I suppose if people were coming at you, you could be deflecting them and then just going around. But actually what's happening is there's people in front of you and you're trying to go by them huh? and you want to do it without any aggression or hostility and I just here and then here and then here and then here okay and that gets me through the crowd if they are not hostile if suddenly I run into someone who is doing this now let me switch around then I go back to what I was doing before. The hands come out, I do this one. Now I'm not hitting them. If it was a desperate situation, I might have to. But this is enough to cause them to put their hands back to protect themselves. And then I can do this one, hold them and keep going. So this combination will handle the hostiles and waving hands will handle the others, okay? Now, occasionally, if you're in a hostile situation and there's a person here, what they may do is try to kick you, okay? And we cover that. Here comes a kick and I do this, okay? Now, if that's all I need to do, that's fine. If this is one of these front kicks that goes in and out, I can either hold the person so they don't get their balance and go on, or if it's critical and I need, to, if they're still coming, I could stop them, okay? Now, being careful, you don't have to harm people, okay? do all of these things that way. If you're in a desperate situation and you're not bound by the do no harm, I showed you that when you get to the side of a person's head, it's very vulnerable, okay? Now, striking right here will have the effect of them losing balance and going on over. We're not causing bleeding, we're not attacking arteries and so forth. But that's one of those points where the body automatically gets away from it and can take away the balance. Okay, so now 
we are really covered. The Tai Chi moving for better balance form. And we're training each other and we're teaching each other as we go through. Okay. There is one at the end and it is more complex, but we still need to do it. Okay. If you would come over to here. Uh, if I'm here and there's people on either side and I'm escaping, okay, uh, I can freeze this one here. I can come back and pivot and push. When they push me, I can lift them up and toss them back, okay? Now, in the, in the old days, this person often had a shield and it would still work with that because I could get under the shield and do that. So once again, I'm not harming, but I'm opening a path so that I and my training partners can escape safely, okay? There is one that I haven't mentioned, and this is just a maneuver that you're moving along and suddenly instead of just two people that you could divide, let's say there's three, okay? So if I'm faced by three people, I will, uh, what I need to do is I need, there's two more, okay? Now I can't just divide them because they'll be on top of me, okay? But, if there's three, what I'll do is I'll move over this way. That will pull this guy over to follow me. Okay. And then I'll come over this way and go around them. Huh? I will jab them together and maneuver around. When I get around, I can do this or whatever I need to do. But it's just a simple way. You have three and you go this way and then around this way <laughs> and you trick them out of the way. Okay. Okay. So, by the time you get through the safety training, you have covered the forms that make up the fall prevention. Now, we're focused in safety up here, but the foundation for the whole thing the safe stepping patterns, okay? These safe stepping patterns are what keep you from being, to fall down, being knocked down, and that is critical. In the old days, the moment you hit the ground, the bad guy with a spear or a sword would simply kill you. Today, you hit the ground, if you're a senior and you broke your hip and you have a concussion, that can be deadly as well. But if you're simply trying to survive a riotous situation, you never want to be on the ground where somebody could kick you. That's not as bad as a spear, but in modern terms, there is no referee. This is not a game. There is no cage protecting you. And there's a lot of people who tend to confuse tactics that work in the game, even violent games, with the reality on the street of being on the ground. Okay. Well, I hope I've made the connection between the safety classes and the fall prevention classes and I will come back next time and get into more detail about the way we practice in the Yang style and gradually build up more and more balance and more and more speed. Thank you.